Hey guys, welcome back to Salesforce Made Simple. In today's video, we're going to build a screen flow that was requested by one of our subscribers. So the subscriber says, I'm in the midst of a Salesforce flow creation nightmare. I've been trying for the past month to create a screen flow that will enable a user to enter contact info into a screen, like the name and the birth date, do a query to search for an existing contact inside of Salesforce. If the records exist, the user will see the existing records and be able to update them. If not, they will see a message displayed indicating there are no existing records and be able to create a new contact record. So I parsed out some of the requirements there and I've gotten written down for later reference, but that's what we're going to build in today's video. So we're going to build a screen flow. We will get a get element in there. We will have a decision element. We're going to probably have a loop or maybe even a data table. I haven't totally decided yet. I'm going to do this on the fly and we'll see if it works. So I'm going to stop there and we will get started by building our flow. Okay, so I have the uh, flow requirements up here on one page and in the other page we have Salesforce. So I'll just jump over to the flow wizard or the builder and we'll get started building. You know, Typically you might spend a bit of time mocking this out. I'm just going to jump in and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to open up a new flow and it will need to be a screen flow as per the requirements. To start out I'll do this in freeform layout and if it starts to get messy, we can switch to the auto layout. So let's go look at the requirements. So um, we start out, the user needs to be able to enter contact info into a screen. So that's easy. We'll start with the most basic and we'll just drag a screen element to the flow canvas. Um, we'll label this screen one. And I'm gonna hide the header and press done just to get that on the canvas there. I'll connect the start element to the screen and now I can do some more customization on the actual screen itself. So I'm gonna hide the pause button and I guess this is you know the very first screen that the user will see. So maybe some display text here uh, would be helpful. I uh, can say display text one. Oops, there can't be any spaces. So here in this display text, I will just write, uh, please enter the first name, last name, and birth date of a contact below. Maybe I can make that a little bit bigger so it's easier for whoever's reading it to see. So we have our display text there. So we have some instructions, but now we need fields that the users can enter the data into. So I'm going to use a text field and I'll just call it first name. And then I guess the label, I will space it out so there's a space. The API name can be first name. I'll drag another text here and call it last name. That's fine. And then I'm going to use a date field, um, just a regular date field, and we'll call this birth date. maybe one word for birth date. I think all these fields I should mark as require. And I could potentially you know, put a section on the layout. Where is the section? Here we go. Just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, I know that doesn't look any different, but if we add a column, that looks better. All right, so now we have our first name, last name, and birth date. We'll press done. And now what we need to do is use that information to query Salesforce for a contact that has, you know, a match. And it looks like, um, I guess a good question here, like if I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with this person, this user, I would say, okay, uh, we're searching name and birth date. So right here, there's an and statement. It's always good to check if, um, if it's and or. You know, if they find the name or the birth date, do you want to see it? Or does it need to be an exact match where it's name and birth date? Because it says name and birth date, I'm going to use uh, and logic here. But that would be a point of uh, curiosity for me if I was, you know, writing these requirements down prior to a build. At any rate, I'm now going to drag a get records to the canvas. And we'll call this get contacts. And of course, we'll search for objects of the contact S object type. And here we need the first name, 
field. We need the last name field. And we need the birth date field. Oh, it's right there. And we'll say that the first name equals, and then we will pull the uh, first name field from our screen. Then the last name must equal the last name from our screen. And then the birth date must equal the birth date from our screen. Uh, so here we now have another interesting option where we can either pick one record or all of the records. I think, um, yeah, so there's a there's an S here. So this could be plural records. So if, yeah, and again here, another S. So if plural records exist, they will see the existing records and be able to update it if necessary. So I guess we would need to uh, select all of the records then because we would be showing multiple records. So we have our screen and we'll connect that to our get contacts. And why don't we save the flow at this point and we call it screen uh, contact, contact finder, press save. And I guess now we could just go to uh, a loop. And so what we'll do is we'll have a decision element that kind of uh, checks to see if we found or didn't find contacts. Uh, in the event that we do find contacts, we can uh, loop through them all and show a screen inside the loop that lets you update them in some fashion. So we'll say, um, I don't know, matching contacts found. This is our decision element. And we'll have one label, uh, one outcome for yes. And then we'll press the little plus button here and we'll have another labeled outcome for no. In the yes outcome, what we need to do is use our uh, record collection variable here, contact from get contacts. We'll select that. And the operator that we will use is is null. And we'll say that that's false. So logically speaking, if the collection is not empty, then there must be something inside it, meaning that we found contacts and you know maybe multiple contacts. But at any rate, there's at least one. I guess the other uh, option is that the contacts from get records is null equals true. And that would mean that you know we searched Salesforce and we didn't find any contacts at all. So we'll press done. And then we're going to connect our get records to our matching contacts found. And I will press save. And so let's say we found maybe two contacts and now we want to make some updates to them. So let's drag a loop over here and we'll call it loop through uh, matching contacts. And for the collection variable, we'll use contacts from get contacts. If you want to specify a, a direction that you do the loop through, like by birth date or something, you could. Uh, I'm just going to go from first item to last item. I'll connect my decision for the yes outcome to the loop. And now we're inside our loop. And so in this portion of the requirement, um, we've done our query here. And if the records exist, they will see the existing records and be able to update it if necessary. So let's um, show a message by dragging a screen here. And we'll hide the header. I'm not gonna, going to show the pause button. Um, and I could just call this screen two. And we can drag some display text to the top. We can call it display text two. And what will we write here? We want to show the name, I guess first name, last name, and birthday of the contacts that we found. So I guess I could write, um, we found matching contacts inside Salesforce. The first, um, yeah, maybe the first name I don't know. I'm trying to think if we should like show every single field, um, like write it out first, or I could just say the information is below instead of explicitly stating is below. And so here, what we could do is use a resource and we'll reference the current item from our loop. So that's the contact that we found. And I could say first name. So maybe put that there. And right at the start of that, I can do a uh, first name like this. 
um, last name like oops this I guess birth date like this enter another line there and so what I'm doing here is I'm using the current item in our loop which represents the uh, contact that we found in order uh, to grab the field value for that uh, record and display it to the user going through the screen flow. And I'm going to do this for each of the three fields current item from the loop and again I will just oops that's not right current item from the loop there we go birth date so you can see in this screen here in, in our display text um, it says we found matching contacts inside Salesforce the information is below and this is you know the information that was found so we'll press um, done just to get that on the canvas and press save and then I'm gonna connect our loop uh, for each item in the connection, in the collection, we do want to show that screen. And so now we have a screen here, and there's a couple different ways we could handle the updates. Because um, they want, the user requested that they be able to update the existing records if necessary. So what we could do, um, again, there's a couple ways to do it, but I'm thinking that we could just show like a pick list, where it's it's like, do you want to you want to update this contact and I don't know maybe a pick list isn't the best way radio buttons might also work um, but you know we could have a choice here for the user to say yes yes update is what I'll call it the choice label will be yes and the choice value could be like yes update press done and we'll make a separate choice here called no update choice label which is what the end user will see will be no and the choice value will be a no update so the API name is what we um, will see internally in our flow the label is what is shown to the end user and the value is what um, Salesforce records the choice selection as in case we need to use it in a formula. So if they select no from the pick list, the value of that choice will be uh, no update. So we'll just keep that in mind. Um, again, this is one of several ways you, you could potentially do this, but um, we'll let the user say yes, I want to do an update, or no, I don't. And then we can you know, bring another decision here. Uh, want to update contact um, yes update contact so this will be choice one and what we'll do here is just reference that pick list um, right here do you want to update this contact that will equal uh, yes update we'll add another outcome we'll call it no update contact And we'll say that the uh, no update equals no update. Or wait, excuse me, the pick list. Where's the pick list? Do you want to update this contact equals no update? We'll press done. So we'll connect our screen to our decision. From here, if they don't want to update the contact, then we could just show them the next contact. So I'm going to drag uh, no update contact to the loop and again I'll also drag the, de de the default outcome back to the loop in case there's like a bug or something or if there's no uh, contacts at all then we don't need to do anything. Now we need a screen to handle uh, the updates they want to make so we could drag a screen over and hide the header, hide the pause button and in order to do this properly, you would need to know what fields you would want your users updating. If uh, we know in advance that they maybe want to update the uh, address or something like that, we can put it on here. If they need to be able to update every field, then you would have to put every field on here. There's not really a great way to um, update a field, uh, like an arbitrary field. Like you would, you would need to know in advance. So we could say perhaps, why don't we go look at a contact? I'll go find a contact. Sales app. And I'm just going to look for a contact that exists inside of Salesforce. And Bob Apples is one 
that I've created in the past. And so let's say we want to update the mobile phone number. So we could drag a display text to the canvas. Uh, update, oh wait, geez. I hit all sorts of buttons on my keyboard. Display text three, we'll call this. Um, and we'll say, please update the mobile phone number below. And then we could put in a field for the mobile. So we could do it like this. We could call it uh, mobile phone. mobile phone. The uh, placeholder text, we would want to be the current mobile number. So we'll reference the current item from our loop and we'll find the mobile. If there's nothing there, it'll be blank. But if there is something there, um, they'll be able to see what it is. And then required, we'll just make the update required because they said yes. I'll leave the previous button on there because they definitely should be able to go back. So we can press done. Oh, oops, I don't think I named my screen. So we'll call it screen three and press done. So if they say yes, we do want to update the contact, they will be able to update the contact there. So once they've typed in a new mobile phone value, we need to take that update and move it into the database. So we'll do that in uh, two ways. But before we do, we need to create a new resource and this resource, well, there's going to be two. There's going to be a contact collection and a single contact record. So I'm going to make a new resource of the record type, or excuse me, a variable that's of the data type record. We'll call this single contact. And this object will be of the contact type. I'll press done. And I'm going to make another new resource. And this will be a variable uh, called contact collection the data type will be record and we're going to check the box over here to allow multiple values. The object type will be contact and we'll press done. So now that we've created those two uh, variables both a single contact and a contact collection I can use the elements and drag an assignment logic to the canvas. I can set um, the single contact ID equal to the current item from the loop ID and then I can set the um, single contact mobile phone equal to the mobile phone screen component and here we will select the value that was entered. I can call this uh, assign contact values press done, connect the screen to the first assignment, and then the second assignment that we drag to the canvas will be um, adding the first assignment into our collection. So contact collection equals, or we will add, excuse me, the single contact. So we'll say add to collection. Oops, add to collection. We're going to press done. We'll connect the first assignment to the second assignment, and then we'll take this assignment and drag it to our loop. So we can now loop through every single contact and show the end user an option to update records that they find. And maybe what we'll do is we could do a quick debug. And so I'll change the birth date of uh, Bob Apples to, I don't know, July. 15th of 1995. Press save. And why don't we do a debug here and see if we can find that contact with our screen. So we'll load up the debug. Press run. So the screen will kick off. Say please enter the first last name. So we'll do Bob Apples. I forget what his birthday was already. Okay, July 15th. I think 07 15 1995. We will press next. So we found uh, one contacts, and then it says, Do you want to update the contact? We could say yes, press next, 
and then it will ask us to update his mobile phone. So we do 888-444-9999. Press next. And it looks like everything's working so far. So we get our loop and you know, no, no errors on the right, which is a really good thing to see. So once the loop kind of loops through every single contact, um, we want it to go and update Salesforce. So the final step would be to drag an update record to the canvas, and we'll say update contacts in Salesforce. And we just need to reference that one contact collection that we created previously and press done. So we can drag our loop to our update records. And so after the last item of the loop, we will update those records in Salesforce and press save. So that saves. And now we need to handle the uh, portion of the requirements where if there is no contact found, we want to be able to create a new one. So I'll drag a screen element over. We'll call this screen four, API name screen four. I'll hide the header and hide the pause button. And I'll drag some display text over. We'll call this display text four. And I'll increase the size maybe to 20, put this in bold. Uh, oh no, okay, no contact was found. Please enter a first name, last name, and birth date below to create a new contact. And I'll get this back up to size 20. And then we can drag a, again, a text, another text and a date field to the canvas. We'll call the first text first name. We will call the second text last name. Oh, that already exists. Last name two. <laughs> and a date, uh, we'll call it birth date. And I think that will already exist too, so we'll do birth date two. We'll require all these fields. Require them all. And is this in bold? I can't remember here, yeah. No, bold, there we go, okay. So that looks good in terms of the screen. So we'll press done. We will connect our decision for matching contacts where we didn't find any matching contacts to our screen. And now that we have our um, contact information, again, we can do the exact same thing we did with our assignments here, uh, except for the new contact. So we'll do assignment, uh, we'll say, single contact and here our single contact assignment we will set the first name single contact we will set the last name and single contact we will set the birth date and again we're just going to reference our screen component here so we'll go and find um, Oh geez, okay, I think it's first name with a space in the second screen, and then last name two in the second screen, and then birth date two in the second screen, and press done. So we're assigning all the fields of our contact variable to match those of the screen. Pressing done, we're connecting our screen to that single contact assignment. Then we'll use another assignment to add the single contact, oh wait, uh, to select our contact collection and add our single contact. Let's call it add to collection. Geez, add to collection two, press done. We'll drag our first assignment to our second assignment. And then the final step here would be to create records. Um, so we'll call it create new contacts. And here we're gonna create uh, one new record. We'll use all values from a record and that would be Oh wait, maybe multiple collection? Yeah, we'll do the contact. That's right, okay. So it's asking if we wanna create multiple records. It's still only gonna insert one because we only have one item in the collection. I guess we could skip this assignment technically because we're only making one. So I could perhaps delete that and then just connect single contact to create records. Just do one. And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, we might not even need this assignment element. 
So I know it's cool that we did this. This is a good way to bulkify things, but I think I just did that out of habit. We could really just delete that assignment and connect this screen directly to a create, create records element. Um, and so we'll just create one record and that will be the single contact that we defined. Aha, no, it won't. Okay, so we, we could create the single contact that way or we could use separate resources and literal values, which we'll have to do. So I can do contact, first name, last name, and birth date. So again, there's always like five different ways to do anything with a flow. <laughs> So we went the roundabout way on this one, but it's no problem because in the end it will still work just fine. And we'll press done. So that's it for the flow. Um, I guess we could do an end screen too. Um, so here we could do, you know, screen five, configure the header remove the pause button and this display text will just confirm to the end user that the flow is done. So I'll drag that over uh, display text 5 and we'll say your uh, contact was successfully created. You can put that in big letters maybe put it in bold, press done and connect our create records to screen five. And then I'm gonna drag another screen over and this is gonna be the same thing, but just for um, the multiple contacts that we're updating. So let's drag, well, we'll call this screen six and we can drag a display text over, call it display text six. And we'll say your contacts have been updated. Put that in bold, make it size 20, press done. Connect our update records to our screen and save. So we haven't done any really, I mean, we did some basic debugging, but why don't we um, activate this flow and then we'll start testing it a couple times just to make sure it works. So I'm gonna go to the home page here and I'm gonna add this flow to the home page. So I clicked on home, I'm gonna click edit page. And I'm just gonna look for the flow component on the left here in the components. We'll just drag that over. And then in the flow component, I will select the flow we just built. So screen, I have a couple flows. Yeah, it's called contact finder and we'll just select that there. Layout one column is fine, we'll press save. Oh, I need to activate this. Okay, activate it. Just assign it as the org default. Press save. Okay, save it again. Just make sure. All right, so there's our flow. And we need to enter our first name, last name, and something else. So we'll do Bob, Apples, and I think it was 715, 1995. So right now, Bob Apples, that is his birthday, uh, and his mobile is blank. So we'll do next. So it says, we found matching contacts. Do you want to update the contact? You can say no and see what happens. It says your contacts have been updated. So you know that could be a bug with the screen, or you could consider that a bug where if they say no, then it says uh, your contacts have been updated. So I mean, you could put an if statement there. That's not the end of the world in terms of functionality, though. So I guess one bug is coming back to update this text. But let's try it again. So we'll refresh. We'll do the same contact, Bob Apples, 07-15-1995. Press next. And let's say we do want to update it. So we'll say yes, press next. And then we can put in the mobile. So let's do 444-555-8888. Next. It says your contacts have been updated. Okay, cool. So let's refresh this screen. And we should see an update here to the mobile. And we do. So that's updated. So let's delete out the mobile here. And we'll do one more test where there are two contacts named Bob Apple with the same birthday in the system. 
So let me find another contact. Okay, Tina Apples. We'll change this to Bob so that they have the exact same name. And we'll give it um, the same birthday. So 715, oops, I typed in 815, 1995. Press save. There we go. And we could refresh this page. So we'll say Bob Apple's birth date, uh, 7 15, 1995. Next. It says we found a matching contact. And yes, we want to update this one. So next. Mobile will do 888 444 5555. Next. And it takes us to our next contact. We'll say yes, we want to update that one too. And this time we'll do 222 333 4444. Press next and your contacts have been updated. So let's refresh the first one and we'll refresh the second one. So that phone number was updated and so is the second one, just as they should have been. Great. So we can update a single contact, we can update multiple contacts. Let's refresh and we could try and create a contact that doesn't exist. So Tina Apples was just taken out of the system so we'll look her up. We can give her a birthday of, I don't know, 1994. Next. It says, no contact was found. Please enter a first name, last name, and birth date to create a contact. So we'll do Tina Apples with the same birth date, 1994. Press next. And it says, your contact was successfully created. So if we look, look at the contacts here, we should see a new contact, Tina, that was just created. And we do. So that is the basics for this screen. You know, we get the basic architecture and logic there. There are definitely improvements that could be made, like updating the text at the end. I could already think that um, you may need another loop if you want um, the user to be able to create multiple contacts at the same time. I know in the new contact that we created, we didn't actually link it to an account. So that could be another improvement. Um, there's lots of ways to kind of customize this flow. But with um, the video getting a little bit longer, I think we've done a really good job here of uh, handling the initial requirements and giving a really solid foundation for this uh, subscriber to make future adjustments. So just to recap, our flow starts off. We uh, prompt the end user to give us a first name, last name, and birthday. And then we use that information to query the database. We use a decision to uh, say yes or no, we found the contact information. If yes, then we loop through every single one of those contacts, allowing the user to make updates. We did this in kind of um, one potential way that, that you could do this. I guess there's probably three or four different ways to set this up. One would be to download um, a component from the App Exchange that lets you show everything in a nice table and edit it that way. But if you, you know, don't want to download something from the App Exchange, I figured I would just show you what the basic tools in Salesforce could do. Um, at any rate, we're showing a screen for the different information. Another change here is we could say, you know, we could maybe count all the contacts first and say we found two matching contacts. Uh, so the user has some contacts, context while they're going through the contacts in the screen flow. We could also maybe do a pick list, or excuse me, we could do radio buttons instead of a pick list here. But at any rate, you know, our users are able to see the contact information, decide yes or no if they want to make an update. And then the loop proceeds, and then um, after the loop finishes, it updates those records in Salesforce and shows a completion screen. If we don't actually need to update any contacts, we just want to create new ones, then we see a screen that allows the user to fill in that new information. An improvement to the flow here would be maybe taking the values from the first screen and pre-populating them. So you know you could use this default value here and default the value to um, the things that were entered earlier in the flow. Um, but we, you know, we take this information again, and then we use that to create a record in the database and confirm that to the end user. So this was a longer video, but I hope it was helpful. Leave a comment below with what screen flow you need help with. And in the next video, I might just build it. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Make sure to like the video. And again, feel free to leave me a comment with what flow you want me to build next. If you haven't already, subscribe so you can get more content just like this. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce Flows, check out my course on Udemy. 
has over 9 hours of in-depth Salesforce Flow tutorials even better than the one we just built. For a limited time, the course is 30% off using the link in the description. This coupon is going to expire 30 days from today, so don't wait. Go to Udemy and enroll right now. With that said, have a great day.